Right guys, Neil from Neil Coins Recording. Today we're going to have a look at the GoPro app. I'm going to run through all the functions. It's nice and easy to follow um, so that you can use the app with your GoPro. So let's get into the video. Right guys, welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back to my channel if you're not. Um, as always, both equally as welcome. Really do appreciate you watching my videos. So great to have you all on board. Um, if you do find the video useful, please like, subscribe, hit the bell so that I can notify you of future videos. And generally get involved, leave a comment below, let me know what you think of the video, let me know your experiences with the app that we're going to look at in this video, and just generally be part of the community. It all really helps me grow, and it's always great to get comments from you guys. So today I'm going to be looking at the GoPro app, which many of you may have seen, some of you may not have. Um, but all of you should definitely check out. It really does improve the whole GoPro experience. In my opinion, I, I think it's a really good app. So I'm just gonna walk you through how the app works and how you can use it in conjunction with your GoPro. I've got a GoPro Hero 7, I still haven't got the GoPro Hero 8. The app should work with most GoPros. But let me know in the comments which GoPro you've got and if your app still works with it, because I'd be interested to know how far back the app works. So the app's available for iOS through the App Store and for Android through Google Play. Whichever device you've got, the app should be good to go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is link the GoPro to the app on your phone. So you downloaded the app onto your phone, now you need to link it with the GoPro. And it's quite simple to do. On the GoPro itself, if you go to Preferences, Connections, wireless connections and make sure that's switched on. If you open the app up on the phone, on your phone, then this is the first screen that you're probably gonna see. So all you do is click on control your GoPro and then it should connect to your GoPro. GoPro wants to join Wi-Fi Network Hero 7 Black, which is my GoPro. So join and then that should connect the two. And now we're getting a preview on the screen of the GoPro screen. So, for the purpose of this video, we're on a roller coaster. And as you can see, the app on the phone is picking up the image that's coming straight out of the GoPro camera. So now we're just gonna get run through the functions on the app. So the icons along the bottom are the different functions on the GoPro. You've got your time lapses, you've got your video modes, you've got your photo modes, and you've also got uh, live mode where you can live stream to social media and we're not actually going to go into that in this video because that's a video in itself but I will do that at some point um, but yeah so you can live stream from, I think it's from the GoPro Hero 7 onwards you can live stream on social media using your GoPro and you can do it via the app that being said let's look at the rest of the functions if you click on the time-lapse photo it will bring up all the different time-lapse options so now we're in time warp video if we then click on the settings button in the top right hand corner to bring up all the settings for time warp. Regardless of which mode you go into, you will get the mode settings at the top and then below that you will get the setup settings which is the setups for the whole GoPro camera. And you can change the setup for the whole GoPro camera within any of the different modes. So let's just do it the first time. As you can see, you can activate voice control on the GoPro. All you do is this, GoPro, start record. Brilliant. And then to stop it, GoPro, stop recording. There you go, voice activation, brilliant. Okay, so you've got your voice control, uh, you've got your voice control language, wake on voice, so you can, you can turn, it, turn that on and that'll turn your GoPro on. If you say something, it'll turn your, turn your GoPro on. I can't remember what the actual command is at the moment, but. You can turn your beeps on and off or make them quiet. If you're using a GoPro at a wedding or something like that, you don't want the beeps to be on, so you just turn your beeps off using that option. You can turn the LEDs on and off. Um, so quick capture. Quick capture, that's a nice function. With the quick capture function on, if you're out somewhere, you want to start recording, um, but you don't have to turn it on and press record. All you do is you hold down the record button or the shutter button 
and it will turn the GoPro on, but it will also start recording straight away. So wherever you are, turn it on with that button. If you've got the quick capture function turned on, turn it on with that button and it will start recording. If you hold the button down, I believe it will take you to the time lapse or photo mode as well. So that's a great little function. Um, it'll be off and then you just hold the button down and it will just start recording straight away without you having to go into the menu or anything. So that's quite a handy function to have. Okay, so that's the quick capture mode. So the default mode is the mode that it will go straight to. Um, I keep mine in video because that's what I use most of. Using it more for, for photography, you can change this to photography or time lapse and that'll be your default setting when the GoPro turns on. Auto off, you can change how long it is before the GoPro powers itself off. At the moment I've got mine on at 15 minutes, but it probably should be five. Um, and then that'll turn the GoPro off, save the battery when you're not using it. And the screensaver, you can choose how long it is before the screen goes off on the GoPro and it just goes blank. Uh, I've got mine set for two minutes, but you can have one minute, three minutes, or you can just have that switched off so it's on all the time. You can turn the LCD brightness on the GoPro up or down with this function. Down or up. Okay. Orientation. At the moment, your GoPro, if you turn it upside down, it'll automatically turn the picture up the right way to depending on how you have the camera. If you have it up, it's always the right way up when it's up. Have it on down, it's always the right way up when it's down. And it won't move from that. So it doesn't matter if you do that, it won't just flip the screen up or down. So you can do all that, but I'll keep mine on off at the moment and then it will just move whenever I move the camera. Okay, GPS, you want that on most of the time, I would have thought. Language, you can change. You can change the video format between NTSC and PAL, depending on if you're in America, Europe, and all that. Um, video compression, I'd leave it on most compatible. You can delete the last file that you made. You can delete all the files from the SD card here, so you can format your SD card here. And then you've got your camera info, the version of the firmware. Uh, you've got the locate camera, so if you've lost your camera, I mean, unless it's pretty close to you, you ain't gonna find it. If you have lost your camera and you think you're pretty close, you can switch that on and find it. But again, you'd have to be pretty close to it anyway. If you've lost it in the sea or something, you ain't gonna find it by doing that. And anyway, that brings me on to another point. Um, none of these functions on the app, the app doesn't work if your camera is underwater because Wi-Fi will not work underwater. As soon as you take it out of the water, it will start working again with the app. Whatever settings you've done with the app will still carry on. Your GoPro will still have the same settings. But the app itself, you won't be able to control anything when it's underwater. And you won't be able to see a preview or anything because the Wi-Fi connection will be lost. It won't go through water. So just bear that in mind. Then you've got your connection settings, your Wi-Fi settings, any other Bluetooth devices that you might be using with the camera. You've got your battery level and your SD card capacity, okay? And that is all the functions for the camera as a whole that you can control with the app. But for each different mode, so we're in time warp video, time warp video, if we go into the settings, the mode settings are all at the top. So for this one, for the time-lapse warp, we can change the aspect ratio. 4, 3 or 16, 9. We can change the resolution from 1080 to 4K. We can change the speed of the warp. It's on 10 times at the moment. You can have it all the way up to 30 times. I'm not going to go through each individual setting and what they do. I'll do that in another video. Uh, this video, I'm just going to go through the app and the settings on the app and how it affects the GoPro camera itself. Okay, so you can change the speed, field of view. You can only have the wide field of view on a lot of the modes, so I don't know why it just doesn't have that option, but it does have the option, but you can't actually change anything because wide is all you can have in that mode. Okay, so that's that mode done. So, if we go into time-lapse video, we'll get a similar menu. Um, so you've got your aspect ratio, your resolution, uh, your interval on this one, so you can have different intervals. 
Um, and again, field of view is wide, can't change it, so there's nothing else you can do with that one. Um, time lapse video, time lapse photo, again, you've got your mode settings, you've got your interval, one photo every half a second, one photo every two seconds, up to one photo every 60 seconds, so you can change all that there. You can change, on this one you can change from wide to linear. Okay, then for some of the modes, you are going to have the ProTune option. Now, for those of you that don't know what ProTune is, ProTune just gives you more options in terms of settings in the camera that you can use in camera to get a better picture or better video that you can then play around with in post. So if you click on ProTune, it will then give us all these different options. You've got your EV comp. You can play around with the exposure um, and I read somewhere that it's, it's good to have this at sort of minus 0.5 or minus 1 so that you can maintain some of the highlights that sometimes get a bit blown out with the auto exposure on the GoPro. So you can play around with that. And then you've got your ISO, your minimum ISO, your maximum ISO. Um, I would usually have my maximum ISO on 800. If you use anything more than 800, it does start to get a bit noisy. So. I would try and aim for keeping within the 100 to 800. But your white balance, you can use auto white balance, which I use most of the time, or you can choose your individual Kelvins from this drop down. Then you've got your sharpness, high, medium, or low. This is on high at the moment. I think that's because I've messed around with it earlier. I think it's, I think as standard, it's on low, but again, you can play around with that. Probably better to have something like that quite low, and then. The, in post you can add some sharpness if needed. And the colour by default is GoPro colour. I would avoid that, I would always choose flat and that way you can do what you want with the image in post without it giving the weird GoPro grade that I'm not a big fan of, it's a bit oversaturated and just not very nice. So choose the flat profile and then you've got more options in post. If you wanted to reset all those to what they were originally, you just click on Reset Pro Tune and it will take you back to where you were before you started doing all the adjustments. Okay, or you can just turn Pro, Pro Tune off altogether and you won't have those options to choose from. So that's time lapse photo. Night lapse photo will be similar, I would have thought. Also, in a lot of the photo modes, you're going to get the RAW function where you, you can choose RAW. It will give you a bigger file image, but a better image to play around with in post. So it will give you a, a slightly higher resolution image. So where possible, I would, I would have the RAW function on, if you've got enough memory on your card. Um, but you should really be using a new card each time. So you should have enough memory to have slightly higher resolution photos. That's all of the time lapse modes. And then we go into the video mode. So again, we're going to settings. And here we have slightly different settings in the mode settings. We've got aspect ratio, you can choose 16943 as before. Choose the resolution 10827, 4K, 720. So you can choose all your res resolutions there. These resolutions on some of your phones, you'll get a little message on your phone saying preview not available. It will mean that your phone's not capable of playing that resolution or that frame rate. So it will still record on the GoPro, but you won't be able to see it on your phone. Um, so just bear that in mind um, that, that that could happen. If you really need to see it on your phone, then you have to choose a frame rate or resolution that your phone can, can play. Okay, so there's your resolution and frame rates. So you can have all the way up to 240 there. Um, Field of view, obviously you can choose between linear, wide and super view. Video st stabilisation, you can turn that on and off here. Don't know why you'd want to turn it off. The stabilisation on the Hero 7 is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, Hero 8 is supposed to be even better. So let me know in the comments below actually, if you've got the Hero 8, what the stabilisation is like. I'm quite keen to, to see that. Short clip length, if you turn the short clip function on, what it will do is when it records your video, it will record it into really small chunks and the idea is that you've got small manageable clips to upload to social media but it'll be a bit annoying if you're trying to record a long clip and it chops it up into loads of 15 second segments so only really turn it on if you've got the whole social media thing in mind uh, then you can choose 15 seconds 
or 30 seconds. But for, for now, we're going to leave that off. And then again, you can do all your pro tuning. Um, same as the fact, as the only option that will be different is the audio. So you can actually record raw audio tracks um, that you can use in post that will be a better resolution than the other one comes straight out of the camera. Um, I never use GoPro audio anyway. Um, if I'm recording to camera on the GoPro, I usually use a lapel mic. Um, yeah, and I usually just use music over the top of GoPro footage. But if you did want to use the audio, then that's the, I would select the raw audio track, and again, it would create a slightly bigger file um, in a separate folder. And again, you can reset the Pro Tune. That's all of the mode settings for video. That's that, and then we've got the photo. And again, you can choose between linear or wide. Uh, super photo, you can have an HDR photo. Um, Pro Tune again, we've got that on at the moment, so you can change the shutter speeds. Again, you can adjust the uh, exposure, the EV comp. Um, you can set your ISOs, minimum, again, and maximum. I'll put on 800 again. Your white balance, you can choose auto, or again, you can adjust it yourself. And again, the sharpness, I would leave on low. Color. It's on GoPro color at the moment. I would again change that to flat. I would always shoot in flat. And that's it for the photo. And then, and then the only other mode is the live mode. Like I said before, I'm not going to go into the live mode, but you can live stream to social media using the live mode, and I'll do a video on that at another point. So that's all the modes. So then if you click on the picture icon in the bottom left-hand corner, it will go to all the files that are saved on your SD card. And as you can see, these are all the files that we've taken today. And let's click on the video and see what options we get. So with the video, we've got download option. We've got a little cut option so we can cut the video. And if you wanted to trim it down for social media, you could do that here. Um, you could also save the frame from the video as a photo. You do that here. You can tag the video if you like it. So if you've got a photo, you can actually just go to the share icon in the top right hand corner. Uh, instead of going save to photos, you can just go to share. And you can share directly to social media in the bottom, Instagram, Facebook, and there's some other options there where the three dots are. Okay, that's that. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Um, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell. I'm really trying to grow a bit of a community here. And I really do appreciate every one of you that subscribes. So I'd really appreciate if you could do that for me today. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've used the app and how you found it. Uh, let me know which GoPro you've got. Let me know about the GoPro Hero 8. If the app behaves differently with the 8 at all. I'd like to know that. I see a lot of these tutorials where people go out their GoPro to waterfalls and stuff and do the tutorials there. Um, I hope you don't mind that I've kind of cheated a little bit, but anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. Posting videos on Mondays and Fridays at the moment, so Monday will be your next one. I'll see you then.